The first shots of the American Civil War rang out in the summer of 1861 in a field roughly 25 miles southwest of Washington, D.C. This was the Battle of Bull Run. As the issues of slavery and rights came to a head, a focus of national contention nearly a century in the making, the nation was torn apart. The American Civil War would last another four long years and forever alter the trajectory of the nation. For generations, historians have dealt with the carnage of the Civil War. It was a war unlike any other here in the States. Um, the death was unprecedented and the ramifications of that were also unprecedented. But I want to go from the many to the one, um, one individual uh, whose story is very profound. A man by the name of William Henry Smith. William Henry Smith was a man born without a penny to his name, yet here in DC he lived his life he associated himself with senators associated himself with house representatives um, the elite such as Charles Sumner and numerous other entities at this period now William Henry Smith was born with a deck of cards stacked against him not only was he born without a penny to his name he was actually black they put him down as mulatto so he was of light skin yet he was an african-american William Henry Smith was not just born a black. William Henry Smith was actually a slave. He was not paid initially, and he worked his way up. He became head librarian, not once, but twice during this period. He was feasibly the highest paid civil servant, um, a member of the congressional staff at a time when the rights of blacks were being rolled back in the South. He was born in Washington, D.C. the August of 1833. Not much is known about the first 30 years of his life other than he was born a slave. His entire family and himself were freed in 1859 while he was roughly 27 years of age. His previous owner, whose identity cannot be determined, was simply referred to as a gentleman who freed them on his own accord. Slavery within the District of Columbia continued for another three years until April 16, 1862. This date signified the passage of an act signed by Abraham Lincoln himself, which ended slavery within the city limits. Smith was an intellectual, educated, and devoted individual. Time and time again, individuals from all walks of life, regardless of politics, took note of his intelligence and devotion to duty. Though his early life is a mystery, it is obvious that he associated with others in high political standing. During his mid-twenties, while still enslaved, he was appointed to a responsible position in the Senate Library by the Secretary of the Senate, John W. Forney. Though his time working for the upper chamber was brief, he must have made a superb impression upon both those in Congress as well as with his peers through his outstanding breadth of knowledge. Smith's career working for the United States Congress was far from over. Charles Sumner, Massachusetts Senator and ardent abolitionist, assisted Smith in obtaining a position as a library messenger with the United States House of Representatives Library. Although at this time his superiors could not justify having a colored reference librarian, he nonetheless assisted the House librarian and future proprietor of the New York Tribune, White Law Reed, in all matters relating to research and reference. He quickly made quite the impact on his fellow librarians, who noticed his efficiency in the discharge of his duties as well as his knowledge of legislative and public documents. One news source, in fact, even blatantly cut through the labels and asserted that he was, de facto, a reference librarian despite his payroll designations. The compliments I have heard paid one who is on duty in the House Library. This Mr. Smith, who while nominally a messenger, is in reality, so Southern Democratic members of the House tell me, an assistant librarian. They speak in terms of highest praise of the aid they receive from him when they want search made in standard works for references to any vexed questions. They say that when they have no time, as is only too often the case, to hunt up the authorities themselves, they have only to ask Mr. Smith to do so for them and he will carefully look for all references to the question at issue and bring the book or books to those who have asked his aid with markers inserted at each place where there is anything in the text bearing upon the matter. Tales such as these 
um, are easy to be taken out of time and place. But this, at this point in time, during the late 1860s, this was unheard of, um, especially for Southern Democrats to defend him based on his knowledge, based on his honor, based on the fact that he did his job and he did it well. Edward McPherson from Pennsylvania was clerk of the United States House of Representatives from the later part of the Civil War in 1863 through December of 1875. McPherson, as clerk of the House, recognized the service, dedication, and excellence of William Smith, and at the beginning of the 47th Congress in 1881, promoted Smith from a library assistant to head librarian of the House. This achievement alone cannot be understated. A former slave worked his way through the ranks and took a traditionally honorary position held for whites. William H. Smith was born at the right place and the right time, which seems ironic, being born a black in the mid-19th century. Yet, William Henry Smith um, was born in a time when the Civil War was concluding, Reconstruction was formulating, and this is really a time when Northern values became somewhat national values. Uh, the South obviously rejected those, yet it was a point in time before Plessy versus Ferguson, before the United States Supreme Court uh, legalized segregation, said separate was in fact equal. There was a point in time where blacks really had a chance, and William Henry Smith is a textbook case of that. Despite the fact that everything was against him, he had an avenue, he had a path. He was educated, well-read, he was born at the right place, and he made a life for himself, him, his wife, and his five kids. In his position as house librarian, though politically controversial, he greatly excelled. The New York Times reported that Smith was the ablest man possible to place in charge of the library, and his popularity as a capable and attentive official carried the day and he kept the place. His achievement was regrettably short-lived. Upon the opening of the 48th Congress in 1883, the conservative Democratic Party took back control of the House and removed McPherson as clerk. In his place, they installed John Bullock Clark Jr. Clark, an ardent conservative, saw Smith as unfit for such a high office, however did not terminate him. Rather, he demoted him down to the position of library assistant and in his place named William Butler as librarian of the house. Butler, perhaps just as ardent as Clark, was brother to Matthew C. Butler, an ex-South Carolina Confederate general. Perhaps disappointed, Smith appears to have not been dissuaded, however. Smith continued to work for the House Library through several administrations over roughly 20 years. It was during this period that he made invaluable connections with many of the House members and became an essential part of the community. In an era prior to Plessy v. Ferguson, he even fought for civil rights as such issues crossed his path. In one such instance, shortly before his 40th birthday, Congressman Samuel Hooper from Massachusetts Senator Sumner and himself were traveling from Augusta to Savannah, Georgia in May of 1873. In their travels aboard a Georgia Central Railroad train, William Smith was ejected out of the first class car because of his race. One would assume despite the detestation of Congressman Hooper and Sumner, Smith was forced to ride the rest of the trip in second class with the other blacks. With the help of Congressman Hooper, he filed charges against the railroad upon his return. After half a decade serving under William Butler, the politics of the House shifted once again, and in 1889 McPherson, as well as Smith, were appointed clerk and librarian of the House respectively. William H. Smith continued to serve as head librarian until he retired from the House in 1892. William Henry Smith was a man who didn't take no for an answer, and that proves self-evident. He was able to accomplish what very, 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 very few were able to accomplish especially blacks here at this time and place. Keep that in mind because stories like this are rare, but they highlight something very specific that is what he was able to accomplish, but it, it also highlights the complexities of this era that we tend to generalize the Civil War, we tend to generalize segregation, but it's a very complicated issue. And this case, this 
micro history, of, if you will, of William Henry Smith highlights that fact. Stories are simple, realities are complex. Keep that in mind.